I'm Ashton Addison from Event Chain for Investment Pitch Media and FinTech News Network. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Jacobo Tolmasia, the CEO of NAMI and Hubi. Jacobo, nice to have you on the show. It's, uh, I think this is going to be a great conversation today. Thank you, Ashton. It's a pleasure to be here. You're very welcome. If you could kick it off by giving a little bit of background on the NAMI project, I know that your tagline is the future of blockchain scaling, and I'd love to know a little bit more about what that means and what the project's about. Absolutely. So we started with the project approximately uh, 20 months ago out of pure necessity. So we have a background and history in the content space. We wanted to build a product around content, but we knew scaling uh, was an issue. So we literally got tired of waiting for the companies to develop scaling solutions on the Ethereum network, and we ended up doing that ourselves. Once we started doing so, we realized that uh, most of the other projects had uh, a very different approach towards the scaling. They were focused only on TPS or throughput, and we took a more holistic approach, and uh, that's how NAMI was born, uh, whereby we not only fix throughput, but also latency, finality, and the transaction fees. Hmm. That sounds great, Jacobo. And I've personally been using the Ethereum network for almost five years now, and I've experienced it when it's fast and when it's slow. And don't get me wrong, it's a great network, but you know, at its worst, I did have transactions that were held up for days at a time when the network was backlogged. And so if you could elaborate for the audience a little bit about what are the exact problems that is going on currently with the Ethereum network and how exactly you've provided those solutions. So the blockchain by itself, if it is a, an open, decentralized blockchain, it is always going to be a slow for the time being. That is the way it is assigned. It is not designed for speed. It is designed for security and other things, other attributes. Now, the way we have fixed it is by building what is called a layer two solution, which consists on taking transactions from the main chain into a different layer. In this case, it's none. And which, yes, it is also centralized today. But on the layer two transactions can happen fast, the finality is immediate, and there is no latency. Furthermore, we also have the possibility of really knowing how much a transaction is going to cost to a user before it happens. Now, those transactions, uh, eventually, once you want to withdraw from the protocol, will be committed back to the main chain. And, um, and the way we have been able to do that is by, again, by building this layer two which still it is a non-custodial solution, meaning that we don't hold people's money. You basically deposit money into a smart contract. And then from the layer two and the applications built on top of the layer two, you can access those monies and those resources. Mm -hmm. So today we have a product called QB uh, Core, uh, which it is basically a wallet manager that also allows you to perform payments on the NAMI network. So you can deposit money and then from there you can access that money onto the NAMI layer and then perform payments, which are fast, cheap, and with immediate finality. Mm -hmm. And I know that Ethereum has had these scaling uh, issues since its inception, essentially. Aren't there other possible layer two solutions that you're competing with as well? And what makes uh, NAMI so special and unique? So yeah, there are many other, many other solutions being built on right now. Uh, we were particularly waiting for Plasma, uh, which was, I think, a project from Omis ago. Yeah. And um, what makes us different is the most immediate point that comes to my head is that NAMI is, is, is built today. So quite a bit of those other projects are still on the whiteboard or are being developed. Our solution has been on mainnet for 10 months now. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that makes it very different is that we don't only fix that scalability issue that we were talking about before, mm -hmm. but also fixes uh, the latency and the finality of the transactions. And again, the predictability of the fees. And what is even a major point in terms of uh, differentiation between our solution and the other solutions being built is that our, uh, the, the, the architecture of the protocol, the architecture of NAMI, mm -hmm. it is quite generalized. Mm -hmm. And that allows us to port NAMI to other blockchains to be able to build an interoperability bridge. And that is also a phenomenal, phenomenal upside of our, of our architecture. Mm -hmm. Interoperability is definitely great to have. Um, and another 
must have, I would say, is user experience and you know front end interfaces. How is NAMI doing with the user experience um, as we're trying to grow the adoption of the Ethereum network? Is it as easy to use uh, for somebody who isn't familiar with Ethereum or with blockchains, or is it quite technical still? That is a wonderful question. Now, to be able to achieve a good user experience, um, I mean, so that represents a completely different level of abstraction. So first of all, and going back to the previous question that you asked, uh, something else we have done that separates us from the other solutions is that we have pretty powerful and pretty simple, straightforward developer tools. Now, these developer tools ought to be used by developers, and um, then these developers can build those products that you're referring to. Mm -hmm. Now, those developers will build whatever the designers have given them or their bosses have told them to build, and that will be represented in a specific user experience. It is true that the user experience today is, is below average in the crypto world. Mm -hmm. and they are too clunky and complex interfaces. Mm -hmm. And uh, we would like to think, in fact, we're seeing that, <clears throat> excuse me, over the last 18 months, we're seeing that some of the products being built today are better, are easier to use. Mm -hmm. Now, the product we have built, which is the core, it is still uh, targeting crypto enthusiasts. Uh, but we're working with other companies like, for example, MBX and Region Block Exchange, which shall be building uh, a product called MBX Spain, which is targeting uh, users of the airline industry. And those guys do not have any crypto uh, any crypto experience, or at least we should assume that they shall not have mm -hmm. any crypto experience. Consequently, that interface that, ought, that has to be built, it has to be like any other payment solution in the world. Right? Mm -hmm. So think about PayPal, think about here in Norway, you have a product called Vips, which is very successful and uh, is, is very simple. So you don't need to know anything about gas. You don't need to know anything about transactions or anything like that. Simply put, you should enter your details, have access to your balance, mm -hmm. and be able to perform quick payments. Mm -hmm. That's great to hear, Jacobo, because that's definitely key in the growing adoption. Now, um, um, congratulations that NAMI has been launched. Um, it sounds like you guys have done 20 months of hard development to get to this point. And I'm curious to know, what is next? Are there more upgrades and developments uh, on that network? Uh, and what's in the development roadmap? Or are you guys good to go? Excellent question. The, um, you never stop finishing, or you never stop finish developing a product, right? So, so the moment somebody says the product is built, that means the product is obsolete. So that is that is a kind of a, a basic premise in the software world. Mm -hmm. What is next for, for us is interoperability. So we are uh, we have right now signed an agreement with a very large blockchain company that would like us to port Nami to their to the blockchain. Uh, that means we will then be building interoperability, and then we will have a very easy mechanism and the interface to be able to access resources of both of those two blockchains, Ethereum plus this other one. Mm -hmm. And equally, we will be porting it to other, to other blockchains. Um, I think that the interoperability play uh, is, is easier to, to say it is important than really comprehend how important it is. Uh, mainly because when you were mentioning before how immature some of these products are, which really are, uh, it is also important to comprehend that if you would like to develop as a developer or as a company, if you would like to develop solutions for two or three blockchains, you actually need a lot of resources and a lot of knowledge and a lot of time and money to do so. Through NAMI, you will be able to do that through a single interface. So it would be pretty seamless and pretty straightforward. So whoever wants to build a game or a payment solution or, or exchange or whatnot, you will have the single point of entry, which would be an interface. And then you will be able to pick easily which blockchain you would like to work with in the, behind the scenes. So that is something we will be focused on for the next uh, many months. And also at the same time, um, we will be working closely with our partners, in this case, MBX and Microsoft. With Microsoft, we will be going to market. We will be co-selling the protocol to their customers. And with MBX, we'll be paying special attention to MBX Pay, which is hopefully one of the biggest products that will be adopted in the crypto world. Great. Well, congratulations. Now, 
when I think of interoperability and a lot of people that are in the blockchain industry that have heard of layer two solutions, usually the first thing they think of is uh, with Bitcoin and Litecoin and the Lightning Network. Is that something that's in the roadmap for interoperability with NAMI? Excellent question. Um, the answer is we would like and we will be porting NAMI to Bitcoin. Uh, it will not be with, with Lightning, no. It will be most likely with Rustock. Although we also have a, a, a second opportunity there, uh, which is also something we have been working on. Rustock has is a company in Argentina, and what they have done is they have ported the Ethereum virtual machine to Bitcoin, to the Bitcoin blockchain. That allows companies like us to run a smart contracts in Bitcoin. So um, we will be able to port NAMI that way. Now, that would again add a phenomenal, phenomenal value to the, to the overall ecosystem of NAMI. Yeah. Definitely. Congratulations on that, uh, when that does happen. And I have spoken to Diego from Rootstock, and I know that their project uh, has been coming for a long time, and they have a lot of great things. So hopefully that works out for you guys. So uh, I'll look forward to that. And uh, my next question is, is this uh, a foundation, or is there a revenue model, and how are you going to sustain the company moving forward? So the, the product, NAMI, has been, has been funded by us, by Huey, has been built by us. And today we are the sole operator of the system. Now, what we're building, what we're setting up is a foundation. And we currently have three companies in the foundation. One of them is NAMI, sorry, Huey. The other one is MBX. And the other one is Liquid, the cryptocurrency exchange in Japan. Now, what we are going to do is transition towards the foundation model, whereby we will have multiple operators, not only one, not only us, but also MBX, Liquid, and more companies to come. In terms of the how are we going to make money from it, it's going to be through transaction fees. right? So hopefully we will have dozens and dozens of companies uh, developing solutions on top of NAMI. Those solutions will generate transactions, and the transactions will incur in transaction fees. And the way Hubie as a company is going to make money, it is by holding the need tokens, which will allow us to earn those transaction fees. The foundation, the way will make money as well. It will be, or the way will subsidize itself. It will be also by holding tokens, which again will incur or will allow the foundation to earn the transaction fees. Great. And you guys are live in the market right now. So are you just looking for more people to do transactions or are you looking for more strategic partners or uh, more smart investors? What exactly are you looking uh, for growth? Actually, we're looking for those three things. So, um, so first of all, we do need those key partners. Uh, it is not so much about quantity. It is more about quality. Um, uh, what we are looking for are those specific companies that do have the need of building a product because they do have potentially millions of customers of millions of users. And we're also looking for the smart money that can come in and open up doors for us. So smart money is not only direct investment per se, it is also being able to connect the dots and seeing, comprehending the overall status of the industry and seeing that the product is built and that there is a demand, but they have the ability to connect those two things. Right? Sometimes we as a company, which we are very small. We are too focused on building the product and going to market. We don't have that holistic understanding of all those key players, what they're looking for and whatnot. Although we we work like, yeah, we work a lot. Uh, but still, we we do need to work with those with those guys that have a better understanding of the, of the entire industry. And what would you say is the biggest obstacle or challenge that you may face as you guys continue to grow? Um, I would say that what we really need is is uh, is visibility in the crypto in the crypto world. So so the industry is um, is terribly mature still, um, by all means. Uh, I know that I mean I have personally been involved for about two years now or two and a half years in this industry, and I've seen some really promising changes. But in reality, uh, it's still very much a green field. So uh, you have about 90 plus percent of the players that are temporary players are in only here for quick money and, uh, and then they get out. Uh, and then you have the small minority that are actually building, uh, really comprehend that this is going to be a five or 10 year play. And then you have 
even a smaller minority, which are the observers, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. try to figure out what is going to be next and when would be a good time for us to get into, into the market. So uh, because we have been literally working behind closed doors for nearly two years, um, we do not have that footprint and people doesn't really know that much about us. And that is undoubtedly our biggest, our biggest uh, weakness today. Visibility is definitely key and marketing uh, on top of strong development. You need to have both, but that's definitely going to drive adoption. So all the best in that. And um, as you did mention, you're looking for strategic partners, customers, and more people to join onto the platform. How can they get a hold of you or learn more about NAMI? The easiest way would be to get into our Telegram group. We have a very small Telegram group. Um, we are always open for questions. We have actually found quite a bit of really cool people through the Telegram group. Uh, we have even established some of the partnerships through through that method. And also, um, yeah, I mean, I would say that Telegram is the best way or just uh, on Twitter directly. We are very easy to find. Uh, we don't hide too much. No. <laughs> Sounds great. I'll leave those links in the description box below. And that's all the time that we have for this interview, Jacobo, but I really appreciate the time. And let's follow up in the near future. Thank you, Ashton. It was a real pleasure. Thank you for having me.